going back to work and how difficult that is. And um, but actually, you have your work cut out for you where the Lord has you stationed at that point in time. So He yeah. has you personally stationed Amen. where you're at. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's a struggle of going there every single day. I can honestly say I understand that. For the last 31 years, I have felt the same way as you. I've not been out on the mission field like you, but the desire to be out on the mission field like you. And so, my encouragement is to you that those divine appointments that the Lord has in store for you for however long or however less He has you there for, it's Glory. worth every moment, every Amen. second. Amen. Every second. Thank you, Amen. Lord. Thank you, Father. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Um, you know, we see so much all over the internet, just even uh, the thing that uh, our brother was saying of those that really, think of all the people that don't even trust in the Lord. Yeah. They're looking. Look, they're looking to us as Christians. They're yeah. looking. They are looking for something. Back in back when the ta twin towers happened, they were looking. Yeah. Yeah. They were looking for something. They called in the Christian counselors, didn't they? Yep. That's what they called in. They didn't call in. Those people say, I don't know what's going on. But they called in. They called in with the God. <coughs> they would say godly people yeah. to come and help them because they didn't have any help. They didn't know yeah. what to do. Uh, but look at the world that we are in today also, the yeah. people that are going to counselor after counselor after counselor after counselor, and even the, not the wisdom that they're getting, they're not getting the Christian counsel. Those people that you come in, the God sends your every day, your everyday life, whether it's into the, the hotel or whether uh, when you're going to the school system this fall or the people that God sends your way, or maybe you're at the Sonic. You know, they're coming through the drive through You yeah. know, maybe that co-worker is going to ask that question, just like our brother said. Yes. And you, we've got, the Lord wants us to be prepared for that. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And the thing is, you just never know when that question is going to be asked. Yeah. You don't. And anyway, I think when our pastor gets up and he, he preaches what God tells him to preach, and, and, you know, we don't want to go out of here and say, oh, that was a good word. You know, and then we do nothing about it. That's I mean, right. We need to walk in the fullness of God, the fullness that He yeah. has called us yeah. to be in. To, Thank you. Just Lord. to know the greatness of His power. Praise you, Father. Uh, I'd like for us to turn to Ephesians chapter uh, 1. If you would. I want to talk a little bit just a, tonight about the greatness of His power to us for who believe. Uh, we work, I, I work in a. a a building every day, and I'm sure that I probably work with individuals. I would tell you that there are probably individuals there that would say that they are living the Christian life. Yeah. And I would tell you that there's probably individuals that say that they were, are not living the Christian life. And we are known by our fruits. Um, there's a lady that came to me just the other day, and she had gone through a terrible meeting, and she, she, she would come into my office crying. And saying, "What do I do? What do I do? I could have, I could have just turned, turned her away and said, I don't know, I don't know." But we closed the door and we talked about the Lord and we talked about uh, what the Lord can do for yeah. her if she Amen. were allowed to have him. That she yeah. has the authority in the name of Jesus yeah. to speak to speak to those things when she walks into a meeting like that. Yeah. Ahead of time, when she knows that those meetings are like that, ahead of time, she can walk into those meetings with the authority and already already know that it's taken care of. I said, Hallelujah. I was talking to her about how the Lord is our shepherd and, and how uh, sometimes it feels like that we're walking through the valley of the shadow of death in those meetings that we go into. And, and sometimes in the, in the work situation, Society would say that the, when you walk into a meeting that we're supposed to be uh, encouraging each other and, and helping each other grow so that we can all grow for the, the benefit of the company. But I can tell you that there's companies all over this world that that doesn't happen with. Now just think about the body of Christ where we just don't, we don't even give that encouragement, that brotherly encouragement, what the word says. We, we forget about what the power of God is really supposed to be in our life. We, what, what do we do? We just like leave it at home. So it seems at times, right? Yes. Ephesians chapter 1 and verses 1 through 23. And it says this, it says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are in Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. It said, blessed be, it says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. 
In verse 5, it says, having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. In verse 7, it says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. I don't want to be going to a church that's just going to tickle my ears and make me feel good and sit me out the door. That's right. Just like put your hat on and walk on out the doors if nothing ever happened. That's you want right. people to come into the church, this church building, that they walk out the door and they say, do you know what happened? Hallelujah. Right? Yeah. You yeah. wanted to know what happened. Yeah. You wanted to know the master. It goes for forward in here and it says, it says in verse 8, it says, wherein he hath abounded to, toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself. In verse 10, it says that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. In verse 12 it says that we should be that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Yes. In whom he also trusted after that he heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that holy spirit of promise. In verse 14 it says which is the earnest which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. In verse 15 it says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and love unto all the saints, it says, Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. In verse 17 it says, That the God of your Lord Jesus, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, yes. that you may know what is the hope of his know. calling Amen. and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And so in 19 it says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? which he wrought in Christ Jesus when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his, under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Go into verse chapter 2, and it says, And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our com we all had our conversation in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, yes. even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath for before ordained that we should walk in them. You know, when I think of God's greatness, I think of his power. I think of, I think of even the men of old in the Old Testament that we see the examples of, of how even, you know, Moses could have, could have just walked up to the sea and said, well, what do I do now, you know? Uh, yeah, I, I, would have, I mean, he could, he could have just stood there and not listened the, and known the greatness of God and knowing that the power that the Lord had. I mean, he could have—he could have just stopped there and said, "Hey, we better turn around. And we better—we better go back where we came from." Yes. But he didn't. He knew God's greatness. He knew His power. He walked in it, and he trusted the Lord. 
He didn't say, oh, we've reached a dead end. But he came and he, he did what the God had told him to do. And what happened to the water? It rolled back, didn't it? Amen. And they walked across on dry ground. He said, oh, this is going to be a muddy situation. You better get your boots out because I tell you, it's going to be deep in mud when we get in here. He didn't do that. He didn't really know what was going to happen exactly. He didn't know that he, he, he just, could you just see him walking? I mean, he knew that God was going to, God was going to take care of him. He didn't know that they were, they were going to see all these things as they were walking through on, did he? <laughs> God just tells us, when he tells us to do something, we just have to obey him. Just like, I, I, I've also, often said, brother, that, you know, I, I, I believe in a God that he does some ridiculous things that people, that the world would say that are ridiculous and crazy. <laughs> and I want, I want to serve that God. Amen. Yes. His love is true. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And he does what he says he's going to do. Yes. Just like when he told Ezekiel, hey, your, your wife's going to drop over dead and you just do what I, you just do exactly what I tell you to do. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. And then I think of Noah. He could have said, Lord, uh, that's a pretty, that's a, that's a pretty big plan to build that kind of a, are you sure about that? But he didn't. He was obedient. He walked when God called him to do when he gave him the plan. Specifics. Yes. Specifics. Yes, right. Every one of us in the room could probably stand up and give testimony after testimony of the specifics that God has given you over and over and over again for certain situations. And even if you said, Lord, is this you? But when you walked in it, because you knew that he was faithful and true, yes. you walked in that obedience knowing the greatness of his power, that he was going to do something. You didn't know how he was going to show up, but he's going to show up. Yes, hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. And every day when you wake up and you go in the, in the checkout line or you're driving down the road, know that he's going to show up. Amen. But we also got to show up. Yes, Amen. yes absolutely. Yes. Praise you, Thank you, Father. you, Lord. What if Moses decided not to show up? Yeah. What, if no, what if Noah said Lord, I, 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 no. I bet you Daniel in the lion's den was thankful that God showed up, don't yes. you think? Oh, yes. I bet the three Hebrew children yes. were thankful that they were loosed in the midst of the fire. Amen. And their Jesus was there. Glory yes. to God. Yes, hallelujah. How exciting. I'd like for us to turn to Ephesians chapter 3. See, the church that we go to tells it just like it is. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Our pastor and our youth pastor and our associate pastor, they lay it right on the line. They said, Lord, they said, Lord, okay, I'm going out there today and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say exactly what you told me to say today. Glory to God. And we, as as children of the Lord, and we're coming and we're coming to receive whatever the Lord has for us that day. We just don't walk out those doors and say, oh, that was a good message. But we need to walk out of there knowing that we have the power and the authority and they're walking yes. in the name of the Lord. Yes. And we to go from the moment yes. that we take, that we stand up from that seat. Amen. Come on. Amen. From the moment you step outside the door. Yes. That you know that you're, when you're walking by those people and they're, and they're crazy around you, let's, you know, it's getting to the time where you can be, you can be in the grocery store and you just, you can feel agitated by the time you get out because there's just so many people in there. And, and there's so many people in there that need Jesus. That's right. And they need to know the presence of the Lord and they need to know his power Amen. and they need to know what he can do for them. Amen. <laughs> yes. yes. Maybe our impatience at that point in time needs to be, Lord, I just give it to you because I'm about to walk in that grocery store. And that's going to be the biggest church today that I'm going to walk in. Right? <laughs> yes. Come on. Because those people are not going to come into Living Word Church because I haven't right. even invited them yet, number one. They may not know where it's at. But, Lord, I just let Living Word Church. Yes. Full of your mercy and your grace and your Hallelujah. love and your power. Yes. And, Lord, if all I got to do is, but, Lord, if I gotta open open up this windpipe, you better believe. I just want to say what you gotta say. That's right. Yeah. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter three and verses fifteen through twenty. Verses fifteen, three, three, fifteen through twenty. 
And it says this. It says, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Let's go up to verse, uh, verse 13. It says, Wherefore I desire that you faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole, fa of the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Yes. I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family is in heaven and earth is named. Thank you, Lord. That he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Yes. I don't want to hear, I can't do it. Because That's the right. says you can. Amen. Amen. That's right. Come on. It says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, Glory and to God. know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. And the verse 20 is, is like the, here's like the icing on the cake, and it says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Yes. According to the power that worketh in us. Amen. If we go back and we look back in Ephesians, Chapter 1, in verse 19, it says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, yes. which is his Whoa. body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Yeah. Glory to God. You know, I think of, I think of, when there's a fireplace and you take the fireplace poker and you're trying to you're trying to stir up the fire, right, with the poker. Yes. Because I tell you what, you let the fire go out in the fireplace in the middle of the night in sub-zero weather, it's going to get pretty cold in the yes. place that you're at, right? Yes. You take the poker and you, you keep putting it in there, that poker becomes red hot. And if you were to touch that poker and you were to touch a piece of paper, it would light it on fire. And that's what God wants to do with us. We as his people, he, we're right in the fire. You should be with the places that you go, you should be lighting those people on fire. You know, you may not even have to say a word, but it is his power that worketh in us. That yeah. power, it's according to yeah. Come on. Yes. yes. Glory. It's the Holy Spirit. Yes. You're just that vessel that just walks through the earth. Hallelujah. That's right. Yeah. You're that vessel that drives down I-35. Maybe you've got the crazy driver that drives in front of you, but you are walking. You may think it sounds crazy, but I, yeah, I'm not saying that maybe the, the maybe the truck will light up on fire. I, I hope not, but I, I pray that it's I pray that, that it, they can even feel and receive that presence, and and you can even pray and say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, for that driver. Lord, in the name of Jesus, as that as that that construction worker on the side of the road, I don't know his family, I don't know where he lives. I mean, he has a hundred people in this family, but Lord, I just claim them all for you in the name of Jesus. I may never receive them. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10, it says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made com conformable unto his death. The Lord. We may not be a Noah. He might not be a Moses. He might not be a Daniel. But I tell you, he knows your name, and he says, he calls your name, and he says, and that's who you are. That's right. Hallelujah. And he says, and that's who you are in me. Amen. Yes. Amen. And he wants us to walk it. Yes. Just as, just as Brother Mike said, don't put your head on. Walk out as nothing ever happened. Yes. Do what God's called you to do. Yes. And be on fire like he's called you to be. Hallelujah. And seek the master because he knows it all. That's yes, right. he does. If he is our all in all. And walk in it. Walk in it. Because those people that are going to come to your desk 
that are going to come to the gas stations, that are going to come to the grocery stores. They have a need. If you can look all over Facebook at people that know our need. I saw a young lady just today that says, why is God doing all this to me? It's because she doesn't know Jesus. I know this young lady. She doesn't know Jesus. That's right. Number one. And God's not, God's not doing it to her. She needs the Lord. People air out all of their laundry online because they got they got to get it out. Yes. And they're told by their counselors, you got to get it out, you got to get it out. But I'm telling you, they, they haven't met Jesus. And that's they right. Get it out to Amen. You. Amen. Because he's a wonderful counselor. Yes, Amen. he is. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Tonight, my encouragement to you is is to be like Jesus. Yeah. And all that may you know him. And may, may you walk in in his power. And may you, may you just, maybe you just, maybe you just burn up the highway wherever you're at. And I mean literally burn it up with his presence as, as you allow him to flow through you. Yes. And him to use you. That Thank you, that Lord. Vessel. To be that, that red hot poker that to walk down, walk down the hallway. And that people be drawn to the Jesus that's in you. That's right. Amen. You know, one time we were, and maybe I shared this, one time we were sitting, my mom and I were sitting in a, in a, a restaurant, and that, that lady, she come up in the wheelchair, and she wheeled up to the wheelchair next to us, and she said, I know you. That's exactly how she said, I know you, just like that. I said, well, I tried to name all the places that she could know us. She said, no, I know you. And she wheeled away, and I looked at my mom like, I don't know her. <laughs> and she goes, and then the Lord just used my mom and she says, Cindy, that's, it's the Jesus that's in us. She said, I know you. You see, there's many people out there that have been drawn by the Holy Spirit. Yes. To the Father. Hallelujah. But some of them have never made that decision. And they walked, they walked away from him. Jesus, Jesus. I remember a time where my dad said that when they first started going to church and after they gave their hearts to the Lord, that, that the man gave the, the, the evangelist gave the altar call. And there was a man that was riding a motorcycle and he was sitting on the back pew and the, and the, the evangelist had extended the altar call. He said, this is your last chance. The Lord says, this is your last chance. And he says, you know who you are. The evangelist didn't know. He says, you know who you are. Like God says, tonight is the night. Don't leave here without me. And the man sitting on the back pew of the, someone that had known him from the church, he says, I know that's me, but I just can't. And he walked out of there and he got in a head-on accident and died instantly without Jesus. There's many people that says, I know that's me, but I just can't. Be on fire for him. Yes. We don't have much time left. That's right. We don't have much time left. That's right. Amen. But maybe that person you know doesn't have much time left. Amen. And you don't know. That's right. Be faithful to the Lord. He's faithful and true. That's yes, he, he is. She's dying. Yes. Be his instrument as he lives there. Praise you, Paul. And listen to the Holy Spirit. We see all of you all in it. Is my encouragement to you. Praise you, Paul. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, Thank you, Lord. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. God is good, isn't he? Yes. Yes.